Today, I'd like to introduce you to the Sidekick Dust Boot. It's a Pwned CNC ATC compatible dust boot designed for maximum Z clearance and Z travel and maximum tool density. It's got some other really cool features too, and I'll show you those as we go along. Now let's take a look at how the system actually works. First, let's just manually control the dust boot. First, on the Masso, there's this button here right now that says, dust hood move down. So if I press that, the dust hood moves down, which is perfect, that's what we want. And if I press it again, and the button, by the way, has changed, now it says dust hood move up. I press that and it moves up, which is exactly what I want. Now, in the setup screen, I can see that my tool changer input three, right here, is set to high. And that's what I want it to be because that's detecting that it's in the safe position. If I come back over to here and I say move dust foot down, look at the setup. Now my input three is low, which says it is not safe. And that's true. When we look at the dust boot, it's not in a safe retracted position. Now let's do an actual tool change. So I'll do this one manually. I'll just enter into the system uh, T2M6 because I'm running T4 right now. And then I'll hit run and we'll see it after a pause. We'll see it retract and it'll go do the tool change. And you notice my tools are spaced on 55 millimeter centers. I'm not crashing into anything. And we are back where we started with the dust boot down. The Sidekick has a number of pretty cool capabilities and design requirements. So I'll try to go through some of those with you now. First, we wanted to keep the accessory mount on in front of the spindle mount here open so that you could continue to mount lasers uh, or cameras or whatever other accessories you might have onto the spindle mount. So we ended up using those to mount the slide mount here but they're pass-through holes. So you can mount whatever you want right on top of the slide mount using the standard holes in the standard hole pattern in the spindle mount. So you might need a little bit longer screws, but they're still there and accessible for you. And this system will not interfere with your laser or camera. The Sidekick itself is mounted to this slide rail mount, which on the side here has this slide. And what that allows you to do is to make vertical adjustments to the position of the boot relative to the spindle without any tools. My version here is a late prototype and I'm just using standard cap screws, but the production versions will use thumb screws here. So you'll just be able to twist this uh, without any tools, loosen it up, move them up and down just a little bit relative to the position of the spindle and make whatever vertical height adjustments you want to that way. When you're done, just tighten up the thumb screws and you're good to go again. I also wanted to have easily adjustable brushes, which is even more important in my opinion with a spindle mount dust boot like this one. Here, you just grab the track, and pull it off, and then you can replace it with a different one. So I've just went from one and a half to one inch tracks that easily. Now, you'll probably notice a couple things here. One, I have this pretty cool thumb hold here. <laughs> Uh, originally this design, I had five magnets trying to hold this track on and it was just too powerful. I reduced it to three and it's still kind of difficult to get off. So I had this little thumb hole here, this little handle, so you could easily grab a hold of it to pull it off and pull it back on. So um, that's one thing. The other thing you'll notice is the track here is missing a piece of brush in the back. And no doubt that's got to have a negative impact on its overall suction. But the way that the Onefinity Elite Series is designed with this Z20 slider, there's very little clearance behind the spindle and that bottom bracket that you can see just right here. So there's no way to fit a brush in there. And I've tried a lot of different ways to try to make this work. There's just not a way without getting really complicated and having multiple actuators moving parts out of the way to make that work with a, with a brush that goes all the way in the back. The good news is the performance isn't bad. Um, I was really only shooting for something that was going to be at least as powerful as the V9, but it turns out it's more than twice as powerful as the V9. 
which is great. Uh, it's about 82% of what the very popular Nighthawk is and about 75% of what the Big Suck is, which is the most powerful boot that, that I'm aware of. So this is no slouch. It's not best in class in terms of suction, but it's got a lot of other cool features and it's ATC support, which really make it unmatched. Now this version here has a 300 millimeter linear rail on it to support the sweepy portion of the dust boot to keep it on axis. And that's an important capability. I tried getting uh, a unit to work properly without it and you kind of can, but it's, it's a little bit more fragile than I'd like it to be. So I think this is a, ne a necessary addition. And um, the, this is a 300 millimeter version. The shipping versions will be 200 millimeters. They will not have this top carriage here that's on the top. Uh, that's just not necessary for this application. And um, so it'll probably be up to about there in, in the production version. It uses a Pwn CC compatible maglock ring. So if you've already got one of those, that'll, that would interoperate with this, although it will ship with the unit as well. So you would typically glue this bottom ring down to the, the sweepy portion of the boot, and then you just uh, disconnect this by pulling it off and the magnets will let loose. And I, 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 it's hard to do with two hands because I don't have mine glued on here, but uh, it's hard to do without two hands. There we go. Um, but yeah, just snap it back on and there you're good to go again. Now on the left side, you can see some of what really makes this thing work. Um, obviously there's the orange hose there that is leading into this, this piston, which drives the boot up and down. I will have an option to ship that hose with the product. So you'll be able to buy that all in one place if you'd like to. And then there's some wiring you'll see that is sticking into the top of this mount right here. And obviously I'm doing something pretty temporary here in this late prototype, but uh, yours won't be like that. I'm just using yellow electric tape to, to couple that together, but yours will have a, a screw down GX12 connector here that's recessed into this mounting block. And you will just screw it down and to lock it in place and unscrew it and pull it off to remove it. So it will be very securely attached and a very professional looking connection. Now these wires, their purpose here, these feed a sensor that is down here in the back of this, this mounting block. It is detecting the position of this foot via a magnet here. And it uses that to determine whether the boot is safely retracted or not. And that's very important because you don't want the boot to be down by mistake or by a failure of some sort and then crash into your tool racks or tools or something else on the system and cause some damage. So what I have done here is I've used a sensor that doesn't have any moving parts. It's not a spring-loaded uh, a spring-loaded system like, like you'll see in some systems. This is a, 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 a component with no moving parts whatsoever. It is not subject to the shaking and vibration of the system. It will, it will not fail due to that. It uh, is not going to have the ability to be blocked by dust or anything like that that would get stirred up on the machine. So there are no moving parts to clog or jam in any way. Now with this pneumatic piston, there's also a solenoid required to drive it, and that will ship with the system as well. You don't need to worry about that. You can feed that slowing out off of an, a, an air filter dryer similar to what you have your Pwn CNC ATC system fed off of, which is what I'm doing. You can also use the auxiliary output air port on the PE. Now, in order to do that, there's a little bit more wiring involved to, to force that PE output on all the time because we will need this external solenoid as well. But uh, either way, whether separate or fed from the PE, you can, you can make that work. And in my case, I'm going to feed it separately because I want to use the PE's auxiliary port for an air blast. You'll also notice that I have holes spaced on 20 millimeters here. This allows me to place another 13 millimeter rail attached to these holes to mount accessories on the front. Personally, I use that for my laser mount. That allows me to have a laser that slides on carriages on a 13 millimeter rail up and down. And with that, the primary benefit is that if I have my laser down and then I move the spindle down, rather than just crashing into the table, 
it will just gently slide up that linear rail and I'll have no problem. So that's a really cool design uh, idea spun off of a video that Peter from Masso put out. There are a number of design constraints that really require some strong implementation recommendations. And I wanna share those with you now so that you can understand that and, and adapt these ideas to your system before you purchase, just to make sure that you know what you're getting before you, you, you decide to spend some money on this thing. First, because our primary objective, or at least one of them, is to maximize our Z clearance, we, we are mounting the, the Z slider on the very bottom hole so we have the most distance between the bottom of the slider and our waste board. So that's an important thing if we're trying to maximize our Z clearance. And second, we want to, we want to mount our spindle such that the very bottom of the spindle is about 105 millimeters away from the very bottom of the spindle mount. And that's important because we don't want to be too high because then we'll, the collar will collide into the bottom of the spindle mount and that would be a problem. And we don't want to be too low because then we're going to give up deflection by having a longer lever here from the tip of the tool. And uh, we'll also give up our Z travel by mounting our spindle too low. And we don't want to do that because we want to try to be able to cut throughout this entire distance between the bottom of the mount and the table. So 105 millimeters from here to here is the recommendation. You can probably change that a tiny bit, but I wouldn't change it much and mount in these bottom holes. Now, if we're trying to maximize our Z travel, it's very important to understand what is the minimum sh tool length that we're trying to support. And for me, that's a flattener. This one's about 26 and a half millimeters long, below the tool holder. And that's the critical measurement that we're looking for. So I want to be able to move my spindle down no further than is required to flatten my waste board at the shortest my waste board is going to be. So that's where this 105 millimeters comes from in the distance between the spindle mount and the bottom of the spindle, because I want my 27 millimeter tool to go down no further than 32 millimeters above the tabletop. So that means my minimum wasteboard height for this length of tool is going to be 32 millimeters. With the maximized tool racks, you'll be able to support tools that are as long as 55 millimeters below the tool holder. So those tools, while this is a much shorter one at 27, will still be able to clear even when they're much longer than this one at 55 millimeters. So very important piece if we're trying to maximize our Z travel, we wanna make as much use of that as we possibly can. And this will allow me to support tools from 27 millimeters to 55 millimeters with no clearance or with, with no issues. And if you have uh, a slightly different configuration, you may be able to make it work, but there's not a lot of adjustment available here. There is a very small amount. If after watching this video, you've got any questions about whether this is the right dust boot for you, just reach out and ask. I'd like to make sure you are sure you have the right product for you before you buy it, spend some money, spend some time and realize it's not a good fit for what your use case is. You can reach out to me in the YouTube comments. You can chat me via the website. You can email me or fill out a contact form on the website. I'll answer my questions the best way I can. And hopefully you're as excited about this thing after watching this video as I am.